Uh, hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank all the faculty members for their coming and evaluating our students' work. Also, I would like to say congratulations to our students and their 40% milestone. Uh, you, I believe everyone here worked hard, that's why you're here. Uh, today I'm going to introduce uh, four teams that under my uh, supervisor. Uh, the first team is wires charging utilizing uh, piezoelectric generated power. Uh, we all uh, came to the point where we are in urgent or critical situation and our cell phone is off, we wish him to make just one call. This team is going to solve the problem. Okay, so here we go. Thank you, Professor Elamai, for the introduction. Good morning, everybody. My name is Nicholas Weaver. This is Andrew Benz, and this is Alfredo DeAngelis. And our project is Key Standard Wireless Charging Utilizing Piezoelectric Generated Power. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm just trying to figure out how to present this PDF as a presentation real quick. I'm sorry for the wait. Just a little, full screen. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Okay, so sorry about that. So this is just an outline of what we're going to be discussing today. start off with myself. My name is Nicholas Weaver. I'm the co-hardware lead. Um, I have a background in robotics and circuitry since high school. My name is Andrew Benz. I'm the team leader. I'm currently working to help however I can with both the hardware and software portions of the project. My name is Alberto DeAngelis. I'm a computer engineering major and I'm interested in the generation and storage of power as well as the software side of things and how it all integrated with uh, the hardware. Um, so our motivation, although piezoelectricity has been around since 1880, it was developed by these two brothers, Pierre and Paul Jacques Curé. Um, it's never been applied to be using for wireless charging, so we decided to take the initiative and take the effort on ourselves to see if we could make that possible. Um, another group's done it before in the past, but they were unable to get their desired results. Um, I'm um, sorry. Um, so you see that fossil fuels account for 63% of all of our generated electricity in 2018. So we're really trying to lower that number. Um, so our project selection. So um, we need better method of harvesting energy without wasting any energy. So as you can see here. Um, additionally, we don't want any unclean methods. We want to reduce our pollution. Um, so this is our project summary. So we're just trying to achieve a nice, clean, alternative method for generating electricity. Um, as you can see by the picture here, a car is driving on the road with piezoelectric sensors. And what you see there is it's being transmitted to light a light. Um, so these are the marketing and engineering requirements we came up with. So this product is to be able to generate electricity. We want high efficiency. It is to be able to store that electricity. We want to have high storage capability. It is to be able to wirelessly transmit that electricity through transmission capability. The charging system should be compatible with most handheld devices such as Android, iPhones, different tablets. And we wanted to adhere to the key standard wireless charging. Um, we want to generate and store power in the devices. And we wanted to have intelligent functionality. So this is the objective tree. So we decided cost, price, weight, storage capability, and durability to be our four requirements we wanted to take on the most. And as you can see down there, that's where that's how we plan on tackling it. Affordability, quality, portability, accessibility, and so on. So this is our trade-off matrix that we made. So as you can see, um, there's a couple of negative correlations and there's a couple of high positive correlation there. So 
Um, this is our overall system diagram. So as you can see here, kinetic energy um, gets inputted into the level one generation subsystem. Um, it's an AC voltage, so what we need to do is we need to rectify that, that DC voltage for transmission. So once we rectify the DC power, then we send it to the level one storage subsystem, and from there we send it to the transmission subsystem, which then we then becomes an input to the data management subsystem. So for the related theory of our project, first I'd want to say our before we get to the go no go slide, our go no go just consists of completion of the generation subsystem. So we've actually passed that point a little and have started looking further into the storage slash charging subsystem. Down here, you can see some about some theoretical values which we obtained from uh, some buck buck converter equations, which essentially they drop your voltage but boost your current, which we'll have to do from our battery into our transmitter but we're also bucking to go from our harvesters into our battery, and some simulations were run on that, so that's why those values aren't here. These values represent what's gonna go from the battery into the transmitter. We've also decided to use a 800 milliamp hour battery because our, some research showed us that the minimum current needed to charge a battery is about a tenth of its capacity, so that would be 80 milliamps, and our simulation will actually show that we were able to achieve over into the battery. This here is our behavior model for the data flow. Um, a mechanical signal is going to come into the system and we're going to store that energy. And we're also going to be keeping data logs of this whole operation. And it's the wireless transmitter is also going to need to sense if there's an object to charge and if so, charge it. When we're using our app, which is going to be used to access these stored data logs, we'll be able to make data requests to the system and get them displayed to the user. This is our functional decomposition, level zero, the topmost level. Yes, so what I was mentioning is that um, it's generated AC voltage, and what we need to do is we need to switch that over to DC power so it can be stored properly. So we built a bridge rectifier for that purpose, and we have that on display in the back. Yes, yeah, so as you can see here, I described it before. Um, kinetic energy goes to the generation subsystem, and then the output is electrical power, which is a DC output after the rectification. And then from the generation subsystem, we go into the storage subsystem, which is going to be two consists of two parts. It consists of the power that has to come from the harvesters into the battery, and then the power going from the battery out of the train into the transmitter because we need to design a form of supply for that transmitter. That's why we didn't just go straight from the harvesting to the transmission because we wouldn't be able to achieve a straight continuous current which would be needed for coherent trans wireless transmission. Um, as I was saying, it goes into the wireless transmission subsystem which is where we'll be checking to see if there's a phone to charge. So uh, for data management, what we've decided to do is uh, develop an application that'll receive this data, um, these electrical signals, and display it to, a, to the user as, um, as data that they can view on their phone or a mobile device uh, so they can see the voltage, the current, and the charge that's produced um, uh, right from their device. So for, um, for our testing, we decided to test the system um, uh, for each of our various subsystems. So we have the first one, which is our piezo transmission uh, system testing. And uh, we haven't completed this testing yet, but um, we'll be testing essentially um, the wireless transmitter and, and how um, it'll react with the other with the generation subsystem. For our second acceptance testing, we'll be testing the generation storage subsystem. Um, so that'll essentially consist of multiple piezoelectric um, transducers and batteries and connected. And um, we'll be tested and we'll be testing the voltage that we produce, which we completed. For our third um, acceptance testing, um, 
will be wiring the piezoelectric system to generate power and storing it transmit and transmitting it wirelessly and interacting with our, our application. And the fourth acceptance testing will be testing the data subsystem and how, um, how it interacts um, and, and with the R application and how it could be viewed by the user um, and, and transmitted wirelessly using the uh, Bluetooth low energy. And that's finally for our integration test, it'll be, um, we'll be testing how the entire system works as a whole. So our generation, storage, and data management subsystems. <coughs> so for our go to go milestone, um, we decided that um, generating the, uh, the power would be uh, our milestone. And we've since uh, achieved that milestone. And we, we've um, displayed that here in our demonstration videos and project schedules. So for our project schedule, um, we completed the research and design of the generation circuitry, and um, we purchased the components, constructed the um, circuit from our schematic. Um, we've implemented it in the sole of the shoe. Um, so they have yet to, so, yeah, so that's our um, circuitry, and it's in the sole of the shoe. Um, so we've yet to, so in the following semester we'll, and, and over the winter break, we'll be um, working on our wireless charging, uh, wireless transmission circuitry, and as well as getting the application to um, communicate with uh, a partner. We've also developed an application. We already um, created the uh, skeleton of our application with, our, with each menu for the voltage, current, and storage capacities. <clears throat> so, um, so here we have a hardware demonstration and a software demonstration, but we also have a physical, I don't want to use the word prototype because it's more or less just a visual design that how we want just to use the actual site. I don't know if you guys can see this here. This is the inside sole of the shoe. We plan on having a cutout as well, like imagine another one of these under this sole with holes cut out for these. I'll hold one of them up. Here we have the the small piezo devices, and they're soldered to a full wave bridge rectifier because they output an AC signal, and that wouldn't give us any power, so we had to rectify it. So each one has to be full wave bridge rectified, and then we'll pop that into the battery. And here are the videos. So this is our application, and we developed it in, uh, using Java and Android Studio. And so that's the home page of our application. And then there's a side menu where a user can access the voltage level of the uh, system, the current level of the, of the system, as well as the storage uh, level of the system. And at the moment, it's not, um, it's not communicating yet with our hardware. Um, and that's something we plan on working on in the following winter break in the next semester. And this is the hardware video? Just one thing I For our capsule project, we decided to focus on the energy harvesting and transmission of that power. As you can see here, by pressing the piezo electric device, we're able to generate spikes on the order of 20 volts, 30 volts, 40 volts. That's the rough range, and they last for about 100 milliseconds, which is a tenth of a second. We plan on having multiple of these devices in the ship, and we plan on boosting this into a battery from there, stepping it down to wirelessly transmit or charge a wireless device. Our go no go consists of just the generation subsystem, and as you can see, we're able to generate and maintain this voltage across the Kiyo's electric transducer. We rectify this voltage in order to get a DC average for which we can harvest. Thank you. You'll notice that each press results in two hills. That's because, you know, if you full wave rectify a signal, you're going to get two spikes in the period. And for reference, each of those blocks was 100 milliseconds wide and 20 volts high. So that was well over 20 volts we were able to generate with a single impact.
as I was saying before in the related theory, we had just simply calculated some of the values for the buck that will be leading from the battery into the transmission. This is a simulation from the piezos into the battery. And here we have a 40 volt pulse that appears for just um, 0.15 seconds. And we have here a switching frequency of 40 kilohertz. With a, we calculated a duty cycle to be um, one out, one out of five. But after tweaking the simulation a bit, we think the period here would. This essentially says the duty cycle is seven over twenty-five, and forty kilohertz is a good frequency because it allows our circuit to reach a steady state and push the power into the battery without generating any sound of the mechanical switching. And we also modified the buck circuit to put in an extra diode here because going into the battery, we don't care if there's slight continuous current fluctuations, which would have been eliminated by that low pass at the end. And since it'll look like an open to DC, it'll still help to hold some of the charge. And these, we also did some calculations to determine the values of these, but after some simulations, they were tweaked and these values actually ended up giving pretty good results, which will be seen. Here we have, oh, we have voltage on the input, voltage on the load, and then current on the load, which will be shown in two pictures. Here you can see our input voltage was that 40 volt spike, and we're able to hold a 10 volt spike, which is good. We might actually lower that a little bit to get more current out of it, since we're beating the 7.2 volts of our 800 milliamp hour battery, we'd be able to push charge into it. And here you can see us pushing current into it about 150 milliamps. So for our cost analysis, we have a list of items and as well as the amounts that we've purchased so far and their individual prices, total prices, who will pay for it, if it's a fixed cost or a variable cost. Um, so the most expensive item actually was our um, hot glue gun and, and glue, 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 glue sticks. Um, the individual components themselves are quite cheap. Um, and total, so far, we've spent $83.48. And it's, of course, a subject of change as we continue um, to modify and improve in our design and further construct uh, additional circuits. Um, our labor costs, um, we've um, estimated them to be, at, um, based on the work we've done so far, to be 30 um, hours each. And, uh, so um, this project is a very valuable experience. Um, it, it addresses like um, many issues that plague society today, such as um, um, the need for clean energy and the need for healthier lifestyles. And um, and so you know we've also learned the values of hard work, persistence, um, dedication, and forth. Um, but we still have much to do, um, and that we we're still going to continue working hard. Um, throughout the winter break and uh, for the next semester. Um, so going into the code of ethics, um, safety is the number one uh, priority. Um, with wireless transmission, most people might think that it's, it's not a safe um, technology. Um, so that's one thing we want to work hard on and emphasize um, to make sure that it's safe for the public to use. And, uh, Capstone did attempt to attempt a similar project, um, but we took that as a, as a, um, as a catalyst to, to improve upon it and, and actually uh, achieve it. And, um, so, and we'll be utilizing any and all resources um, possible to ensure a properly designed system. And so, one ethical concern that we had was for disabled people. Now there are people that can't, that, that don't have the ability to walk. Um, because this design does implement um, a shoe, and um, that harnesses electricity based on um, the user's movement, um, we thought about how would someone that doesn't have the ability to walk, what good is this for them? Um, so, 
so it is a shoe, so it, um, it still provides um, user comfort and, and um, protection uh, so that they can still use it. And, uh, and there's also other applications, um, not just a shoe, but it could be applied for, um, it, rather instead of a shoe, it could be applied to um, the wheel of a wheelchair or other apparatus um, to generate um, electricity based on that vibration. There's a lot of different ends and these are just some of the resources that we use. Thank you for your time. Does anybody Thank have you. any questions? No. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment. Uh, <coughs> similar thoughts about harvesting energy come from uh, come in the area, perhaps harvesting energy from vibrations on a bridge and using that to power at least the electrical needs of a, of a George Washington Bridge or whatever, if you guys thought that kind of thing, or is that too far afield for? Um, yes, that, we did look into that. Those are normally, you know, they'd be placed under train bridges and that's a lot of vibrations and they can be used to power sensors. And, you know, we're just stepping on piezos, trying to wirelessly charge a phone. We realized that wouldn't work directly. That's why we had to put the storage system in the middle so you could generate enough charge to effectively power the transmitter. We, we looked into it and we would have liked to just be able to charge the phone based on power you're generating, but it wouldn't have been enough. Any other questions? Yes. So I was wondering, are there any like uh, existing project in the market? Um, for the shoe design, yes, but there's not much out there scholarly, and all the you know do it yourself build the shoes. They would, they're they're kind of riggy. Like you find in the comments, you're you're not rectifying these, so there's no way to even get an output. So we had to come up with a lot of the solutions and work ourselves. And the transmitter part is on chart territory. Yeah.